called me on the phone. I was like, she sounds surprisingly nice. That's a bit of me. Right. I, but I am a bit of you. I am a bit of you. Yeah? I'm yeah. a bit of you. Right. Yes, definitely. From <laughs> Absolutely. From right, we're going to get in trouble. Do you ever rebel against your dad? Quite only out with boys and stuff. Mm. I know. Did you get any black guys? I did. I went black and I came back. <laughs> I know. They say you- Chumbawamba's during the pandemic were suddenly like, oh, I really, really, really care about my health. Mm. And you were like, okay, 10 ton Tessa. Context, or maybe I said them wrong. Come across as racist. Mm. And if you're a white bird who's conservative historically, I guess that's then a shorthand, they're, they're you're racist. Yeah, yeah. Because you're not allowed to fly the St. George's flag because obviously it'd be mm. a, I'd be racist. Uh, you don't really, you're not supposed to believe in the family unit anymore, even though as a Nigerian, you do. 100%. Of course, comes mm-hmm, on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I knew about Phil. We all knew about Phil. The senior level execs say nothing, knew about Phil. Uh, really? All of the senior people. New questions every day, how's a brother post to sleep? Listen, I give younger books. Trying to educate myself as I'm running through these streets. There's no such thing as black and black crime. You can hit us in the DMs if you want the smoke. Pew, pew, pew. Not sure where the conversation's gonna go. But did you do your research? Yeah, I wanna know. That's the life of a domino. It's the domino, domino effect. Thank you for coming. No, oh, my pleasure. We're here with Katie Hopkins, who needs no introduction. Everybody should know who she is. And if you don't, <laughs> you're going to find out. <laughs> if you don't, don't Google it. Right? For God's sake, don't Google it. Because the media Google. will give you a misrepresentation of the reality. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. But <laughs> if you Google it, there's some shocking stuff. Mm. So, yeah, it's pretty wild. Stuff like stuff but, in the forests. Yeah, when people say, like, <laughs> I've read your Wikipedia and I'm like, fuck. Well, what does it say on your Wikipedia? I don't know, but I'm just like, I don't ever look. I was going to say, is it tempting to have a look? No. I mean, maybe back in the day you would have looked. If someone said like, oh, I looked at your Wikipedia and I'd be like, oh, I'd have a little look. Mm. You know, see what they looked at. And I'd be like, holy shit. <laughs> that's she insane. sounds like a fucking nightmare. I had lots of Wikipedia on me. Lies or truth. Rats. I don't give a fuck. That's sick. Is it? Yes. Mine's like eight pages. Mine's like eight pages long. Really? It goes, yeah, it goes on but forever. you've got a big resume. <laughs> <laughs> you've done a lot in your time. So. There's but, a lot going on. But I think... For before we start, not that this is my interview, it's totally yours, but you should just do what you just did. Which is? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully your husband don't see you. you know, you know. <laughs> She's safe for now. That is why I'm here. That is what I'm all about, is watching your boobs do that. Yeah? Yeah. All right, we'll talk off camera. Okay, we'll talk off camera. <laughs> but listen, Daly's not here. He's in, where's Daly? He's in uh, Amsterdam, watching a cage fight. Yeah. So it's just me today, so I've got to do it all. Do you know what I mean? But <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll manifest his energy here. He's still here in spirit. But um, that means I have to do the intro for daily. Do you know what I mean? I'm ready for this. Ah, ready for this? No pressure. <laughs> Come on, you can do this. You ready for this? Yes, I'm ready. Go. Let's get ready to Domino. <laughs> Is that what he normally does? Literally. And that's like a little fight entry. Was that, was that good enough? It was all right. Was it all right? Yeah, it was all right. She's just all right. You're a hater. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Obviously, he would usually have the analytics. I haven't got them today. So, like I said, we're always bringing you fantastic guests. All you got to do is like, share, and subscribe. Share it with a friend. And if you have anything to say, don't report it. Just put it in the comments and let's debate it out. Because we're here to grow. We're here to learn. And we're here to become better people. Do you know what I mean? Definitely don't report it. Definitely write it in the comments. It's it's, it's, Write it in there. I don't understand people. Like I, I didn't know that on TikTok... If people don't like what you're saying, instead of like ignoring it or scrolling past it, they report it straight away. Wild. And that's just weird to me. It's like, why would you do that? I don't understand. Yeah. So I think two things. One is how easy it is to report. Mm-hmm. Like say you're feeling a bit pissy or you're hungry or you're not in the mood and you just go, right, I'm reporting that. Well, that could close down your stuff. It, it has done. We, we lost our first, We had the interview with Toby Robertson, which is obviously very controversial. Um, he got to about 50K on TikTok. Mm-hmm. And oh, then what happened? Locked it off. Uh, Close the account. Oh, that would be just his name, though, presumably. Yeah, because well, his name is enough to sort that. He obviously said some Tommy Robertson things, and people obviously felt a type of way about it. Yeah. And yeah, so like, report, 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 report. Yes, report. but always just get in the comment. And also, report, when you think about it, you don't really get to have your say, mm, do you? All no. you've done is gone report. Whereas if you write it in the comments, even if you're like, oh, I hate this, I hate you, I hate your platform. Your mum's an asshole. Whatever you want to write, <laughs> not yours, but you know, like mine. Like, just write it in the because co- then you will be heard. Yeah, it's yeah, like exactly. reporting makes literally bugger all sense. To it's, anyone. It, like I said, it's annoying because at the end of the day, you know, we're all here to have conversation. So, well, yeah, and it's your channel. 
that exactly. you're trying to grow. Exactly. So we we don't get paid to do this. No, you, you don't. know, we're giving you this good content for free. So like, <laughs> <laughs> these could just, just just show up just, and shut up. That's it. Just watch it. If you don't like it, fuck off. Yeah? Like, <laughs> it is what it is. That is such a me quote. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good thing. If you don't like it, fuck off. And we agree on that already. We, we this agree. Has worked out perfect. You know what I mean? But um, what are your views on Toby Robinson? Because we did have an interesting conversation with him and. What I was, what was weird is that obviously you have this like media representation yeah, of who yeah. he is, and you have yeah. the in-person person. Yeah. And I thought to myself, if I'm being truly honest, in another world, me and Tom Robinson could have been quite cool. You get on, all right? Do you know what I mean? Of course you could. So I'm just like, this I feel so like true. it's a similar thing with you. But what, what are you, what's your take on Tommy, though? Yeah, um, I, I think you're completely right. Like mm -hmm. without any of the pantomime, because like in life, I think everybody wants to hate someone, mm. and I don't know why that is. It's just how it is. And we fill that space with lots of different things. Like for me, ex-husband, quite a good one. And mother-in-laws, we hate them sometimes. Or we find someone in the media we can hate, you know. Mm. And for Tommy, that's totally, I think, the case. That people, there was an image of him built up. But when you hang out with Tommy, it's nothing like that. I think, I think he did have some rational things to say lots. based on his upbringing. So I think that's always yes. important to mention is like, people seem to forget the person's background and just remember yeah. this is exactly who they are and what they represent. Yeah. When in reality, his viewpoints stem from some legitimate thoughts, some things are a bit extravagant, is what it is, what you, whatever you take on it. We all have those extravagant so we all do have thoughts. Those, exactly. And he, um, you know, the one thing I feel about Tommy, there's some sort of bullshit around the outside that mm. um, it doesn't matter whether I agree with it or not, whatever. But inside there, his, his heart is really good. Like it comes from a place of good guy wants to stick up for people who are trying their best mm -hmm. uh, lovely family lovely kids and he wants to protect them at all costs mm -hmm. and that that if i get back to the heart of tommy that's what tommy is to me and it's why um you know we can have our fallings out or whatever but when it comes to it like when we knew he was going to go down when mm -hmm. he did contempt of court but allegedly uh i walked him to prison oh really because yeah yeah because i still had a mainstream job then mm -hmm. before i was removed from everything and it mattered to me that you didn't just shy away from it and so i was the one that walked him to court because we knew he was going down mm. so and that really annoyed mainstream because everybody else was ignoring him yeah exactly but he's got a good heart as our tommy the only thing i'd say about tommy i think it's fair criticism is he's short <laughs> And he totally is. He's like he's like five two, isn't he? But you can say. I mean, you're you're not small, are you? No, no, no. So he is tink. He's like, don't you start wobbling those boobies? <laughs> is he five two? No, he's like five six, right. five seven. All right. Oh, but, that but, was a but, massive exactly. That was the whole the, penis thing. For the type of there. men you like, you you just think short men should he's be tinky. Your race. Yeah, and I don't agree with short people. <laughs> um, I don't mind like short women not gesturing at you but I, I can't tell you're in a chair I mean, I am, I'm at five five, so. yeah that's not tiny for a lady that's mm. cute but um, not that you give a shit what I think anyway but like I don't agree with short men what's short for? <laughs> I, oh he's I, offended now I was going to say you're, you're a little bit tinky <laughs> but it doesn't matter what I what I think but I think anything so I think you know how like when you're young mm -hmm. And you, if you want to go to a, like rides and go on rides, you have to be taller than a certain thing. I think you should have that for life as well. <laughs> for the number for me, it's got to be probably six foot. So, and that is a high bar, isn't it? Is that because of your bias in the sense that because yes. you're a tall woman? No, it's just a hundred percent that I think guys that are tall are hot, and I think really short guys like five foot two. I just think that's wrong. What well, if they come with six foot energy? Yeah, well, we could talk about that, definitely. Yeah. That's a negotiation, a bit like your car. <laughs> right, what did you call it? Six, a conversation. A conversation. That's a conversation. Yeah, all right. But typically, short men don't come with six foot energy. They come with, I'm a bit of a dick energy mm. and I blame women because not to go down the eugenics route which a lot of people would think I'm really into but um is that women shouldn't if women stop sleeping with short men we wouldn't have the problem I think eugenics are quite natural though <gasps> I think if you do it per, like with this with, with, with intent with intent that's problematic Weird. but I think we from a biological standpoint we do it We're anyway pulled. I totally because agree there's with you. there's again if you look at the men who are um, desirable, yes. mostly desirable in society. Yes. They all have a, the same template. Totally agree with you. So, and the thing is with this being longer form, you can do that nuance thing, right? Mm -hmm, Which mm -hmm, goes, mm -hmm. I think we're instinctively drawn to people that we find attractive and that's kind of eugenics in itself. Yeah, of course. But then of course, if I sat there and went, 
I think eugenics are good. You can imagine that. Qu Hitler, Hitler but, is right wing. No, but I, I think it's, it's the intent behind it. So, like, like yes. you said, if you if you talk with intent, like you know, we should be breeding this human race <laughs> with these it. things. Like, mm. <laughs> but there's no need to talk about because we do no. it anyway. Do you know what I mean? I'm yeah. gonna walk in certain rooms and the girl are gonna be like, "Oh, that's a bit of me." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." Uh, a bit of what? A bit of me. A bit of. A bit of me. A bit of me. That's a bit of me. <gasps> A bit of me. Yeah. I've never. That's a bit of me. Bit Is that what me. you say? That's what I've heard that. That's so hot. I don't think I have in my life. How rude. <laughs> no one has ever, ever looked at me and gone, that's a bit of me. I can't make mine do it. Yeah, I was. They're uh, quite padded as well. So there's even. <laughs> it's like it's even harder to get them. Yeah, I can, I can walk past that's you and be like, oh, that's a that's bit a of me. That's a bit of me. Yeah, yeah. When you called me on the phone, I was like, she sounds surprisingly nice. So that's a bit of me. <laughs> right. I, but I am so a bit of you. Way. I am a bit of you. Yeah. I'm yeah. a bit of you. Right. Yes, definitely. From <laughs> absolutely. From hey, we're going to get in trouble today. I know, but I'm really liking this whole. That's. I'm going to try this. Yeah. When I'm out and about, I'm going to say. What do you say? Do you say that's a bit of me? Yeah, that's but that's to yourself. Me. So yeah, that's a bit of me. I, I like that. That's but what do you me. say to her? Um, do you, you say you're a bit of me? Yeah, you're a bit of me. <gasps> so if you're talking to someone else, wow, if you're talking to someone else, like, I might be talking to you, but like, oh, that's a bit of me over there. Yeah, but if you're talking to you, you're, you're a bit of me. You're I, a bit of me. I like what I see here. Look at this. You've worked this whole thing out. You've used this on many occasions. Listen, I it's all tell. about having sauce. <laughs> this is a skill. You need sauce. <laughs> but I, I don't look tall though. I look, what I do look you mean big. you don't look tall? So I think I look bigger, but in, like if you see me in photos and whatnot, I don't think you, see, uh, you immediately think he's a tall guy. Because like, I'm quite wide and quite big. But then when you see me in person, oh, that's a bit of me. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think people look at you and think short. No, I don't no. think they look short, but I don't look tall. Because tall is like slender, dangly arms and yeah, whatnot. Yeah, the weird skinny thing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That not big on that either. You oh, so not tall, but not skinny. Oh, not skinny. No, that whole if you're just a gangly thing, don't even. If you're gonna blow over in the wind, blow somewhere else. <laughs> so back to topic. It is indeed. So <laughs> like you might struggle with it, this interview. <laughs> I'm, I'm loving it, straight away. I'm loving it because I'm just thinking, what's on the camera? You have to give me a hard time, remember? Because look, people out there and be like, oh, this she's is... a cow. No, so no, no, You're no, supposed no, no. to go for me because like, the similar thing with Tommy is like. What I learned is that there's the human side of people. We had yeah. Mark Collette on as well. Do you know who he is? I've seen there. And he's a very like controversial character as well. But, but off camera, we're talking about anime. I was like, oh, like this guy's kind of cool. Like, but obviously he does hold some controversial views. But if the thing is, is that it's important to see the human side of people because there's what the media portray and then there's who you are in person. Now, if you're consistent with that character that the media portrays, that will show. Yeah. But if there is a human nice side to you, then that will also show. Yeah, and and I think, but I think it can take something to bring that out. And sometimes that could be the platform itself. Mm -hmm. So like if you're on Twitter in the old days when it used to be however many characters it was, I don't mm. even remember, but it used to be like, veda, 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 yeah. and that would be it. So anything out of my gob on Twitter- it was concise and get it, get it, And then it would sound like, wow, mm. like it would be harsh. And then if you go a slightly longer form, people go, oh, There's actually- context, so they start to understand. Okay, okay, or or maybe there sense. is a, a human being behind there. Mm. Right? Or if you go really long form, let's just say some random weird shit show like uh, Big Brother, mm. people go, holy shit, that she's basically me. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. like with a weirder but, but face or an a bigger outspoken. nose or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you end up, it's sort of, to me, it's a little bit about platform as mm. well. And like when you get to chit chat like this, you just like, and it just, we're all just yeah, the same we're thing. We're all humans, yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So similar with Tommy, it's like um, your childhood and where you were raised obviously has a massive impact on who you become. So I just want to understand a bit more about you growing up, like, because I know you had quite a few brothers, your dad was quite strict. Strict, my dad was real strict. And uh, so we were like typically conventional family, like, mm -hmm. Conservative? Uh, five, well, I don't know politically really, but like five o'clock tea was on the table. Mm -hmm. Mum stayed home, made tea, tea was on the table, that's dinner to some people. So now. very traditional. Right, so like five o'clock, you didn't mess with my dad. Mm -hmm. Uh, you didn't mess goof about in school. I went to a school run by nuns, like a Catholic girls' school. Are you Catholic? Do you identify I'm as not, Catholic? Okay. No, um, but I was sent to this Catholic girls' school, and it was strict and formal and rules and discipline. And I was just like the kid that did pretty good at most things. So mm. it was like a really conventional norm. I I think when I think of myself, I think I was a really normal kid. Mm. Bear in mind a kid that was taught by nuns, which A, is weird. 
like who woke up one day and thought, oh, you're a nun. Mm. Therefore you can teach. Like that was bullshit yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah. That's like, oh, you're a monk. You can teach. What? What? what, what what's your rights to? Yeah, exactly that. Do they have, do they have any teacher training though? They've got some I don't think so. They just pray to Jesus a lot or something. And they wore the full, they wore the full gear when I was there. The full blue, bada, 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 this tights, the whole lot. And it, when I was little, I never even realised that that was weird. Like, yeah. that other people went to other schools where mm. that shit didn't happen. And I, I don't want to, like, age myself more dramatically than my face already does. But, like, Jesus, they tied you. my left hand. So I'm left-handed. So they would tie it up behind my back. Mm -hmm. So that, because it's ungodly to write with your left hand. That's interesting because in, I'm, I'm Nigerian. And in, in, uh, in our culture, it's a similar thing. But it's like, to, it's like they, they would say it's like demons or yes. evil. Yes. People have stuttered. So my my mum's ex partner, her his his dad was the same, left handed. He was older. He was like late eighties, and he had a stutter. And the the forcing people to write with the right hand created yeah. the stutter. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Did but you didn't? They didn't tie your hands. Oh, well, my my dad's brother was left handed, and they basically like beat him until he was right handed. So now he's ambidextrous, which is kind of good. But isn't that the weirdest story though? Like they beat him until he was right handed. But honestly, like, like it was crazy. Proper weird. Because, again, even to give stuff like you normally just give things to people. Yes. To give something with your left hand is a massive disrespect. Insult. A massive disrespect, and like you will get in trouble for that kind of stuff. So even to my parents now, like sometimes I'll just forget and I'll try hand something. With, don't do that. Will they tell yeah, you? Yeah, don't, no, I don't have none oh, of it. Cute. Is that you still got your mum and dad? Yes, yes, yes. And I'm they're here. Oops. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. so, and so, your, will your mum still slap you? Yeah, and she's got so none cute. of it. She's like, when did you think you're big enough to disrespect me like this? See that? This is so cute. How old is your? How old are you? I'm 29. And how old is your mummy? She is 55 or 56. So what do you call her? I call her mummy. I <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what's weird? I didn't even know my mum's name you until just... I was like 10, I swear to God. Because she was mummy? Yeah. Because <gasps> that's, that's another so thing. Cute. In our culture, you don't, you don't call adults by name. You call them their role? You call them either mum, uncle, you don't uncle, call them by name. Yes. Because unless you're a similar age, it's a disrespect for a younger person to call someone who's older than by name. Yes, yeah, so it would just be mummy. And then have you got brothers and sisters? No, just two younger sisters. But, but they're more she, they're more Western though. So she, but she'll so she'll <laughs> yeah, give you yeah, a little. They, 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 she won't have it from none of them. <laughs> no one's too big. If she really wants to tell you off, does mm. she have something large and sturdy to beat you with? <laughs> the thing is, now now I'm at a size. I'm like, mum. I don't feel it. Do you know what I mean? But what does she use though? Slippers. <sighs> eh, eh, anything. anything that's close. Remote <laughs> slippers. I see them, it's the cutest. Listen, my mum bit me one time. <gasps> I love to bite. <laughs> I bit. Ooh, what, what yeah. Kind of see, I, I, no. What is it? You. I, you're a bit of me. <laughs> now, what is the expression? Yes, you're yes, a bit, that's, that. a, that's a bit of no, me. So, uh, yes, exactly. No, I, I used to really like to bite. So I used to bite my sister really bad. Really? I really like the feeling of biting people. Do you know what? I heard that's a sign of like deep, deep desire or love for someone. Whoa, so. I don't want to, can't be if it's my sister. But uh, overall, I really like biting things. Is that weird news? You know, uh, I don't think I've ever got to this on an I interview. I don't think it <laughs> <laughs> I think they just human bites. What? It's, it's about a second behind Komodo dragon about how filthy it can be. Really? What? You do real damage if you bit someone. Hundred percent. Well, second behind a Komodo dragon. Yeah. My uncle got bit ages ago, and he had to have a skin graft. No bad. way. Well, like in a pub or something, like a proper full yeah, scale was, pub, yeah, right? It was, it Brilliant. Was yeah, he got it, and he had a chunk out of his neck. That's vicious. Who the hell it? was doing that? Yeah, who launched yeah. a net? What kind of hickey is that? It was, it was a situation. I think that's what we'll put that one as. Yeah, it's a situation. It was a uh, situation. <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. It's dangerous, yeah. Bloody hell. Good to know, though. Good to know. But so your mum bit you once, but not like a Komodo dragon. <laughs> <laughs> but when she's not biting you, she'll just use like a hairbrush she'll use or whatever. Anything she had, like wires, like cables, anything. My mum would make me pick the weapon of choice, like literally. <laughs> like she would send me outside and say, go get me a stick and if it breaks, you have to go get another one. She's alleged she took no shit from no, you. No, 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 no. But that's, that, again, you, you're, so you, you raise the kids how you're taught. Yeah. I don't think I could do it. I, I hope the woman that I marry can physically discipline our kids because I think, I think. You're too big to do it. You'd exactly. be like, crush. And you'd be like, shit, it's my, broken. My, <laughs> shit. My shit. parents always had like a structure of how things were supposed to work. Like my dad had his role, my mum had That's her role. My mum and dad. So I can always count on I can count on one hand how many times my dad hit me. Because if my dad hit me, you, that, that was it, bad it was news. the severity of the of the thing that I did. But the reason why it's better for the mum to do the disciplining is because 
your mum's always gonna feed you. She's always gonna be your, your mum. So like, my mum will beat me. I'll be crashed. I'll be like, this food downstairs. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So true. And so that's sort of similar in my house. Like, mm. so mum would be the one. She it was the hairbrush my mum would use. And but if if it was my dad, you mess with. You'd you reached a point. It a you, were, you, were, you were screwed. But that's another thing that I realized is that I remember the last time my dad hit me, and it was almost like, "Do you want to go?" Like. And you'd never have that sort of sentiment towards your mum. No, uh, no. So I think that's that's important to mention when I'm when I'm reflecting yes, on like my a, upbringing. Like a balance of yeah, power. Yeah, I'm not gonna like, go beat up do, my mum, but do, my dad's do. like, it's like, who do you think you are? That thing hitting me at this age. Like, I think I was like 17 or 18 the last time he hit yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. And that's I felt like you felt do your, it you again. felt I, it. Do it again. <gasps> do it again. Come on. And yeah. I wonder. Yeah. Do you reckon the dad? Your dad knew. Like he was like, oh, 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 this could go wrong. Shitty shit. Nah, this could be the one. That's the thing with. With Africans, they're so like they're ignorant of it. They they think it's impossible that that can happen, and, and I understand why because they discipline you from young to, to for you to respect your elders. So I can never do it, but I felt it in my soul I that I feel it. Like, I feel it's, it. It's coming. So and then he must have been able to feel the vibe and have been like cuff. Uh, do you know what the thing is? I <laughs> think cup, I think if he felt the vibe, he'd probably antagonize me to see <laughs> would you <laughs> really do it? Because I would disown you in a heartbeat. I love it. But you don't raise you do not raise your hands to your parents. That's a no 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 no. See, that's good skills yeah, right yeah. there. It's I think it's important. Is it, and we're losing that in this generation. So so true. Sometimes when I'm out and about and I see a kid whack its mum, and I see, you know, and I'm talking a small kid, mm -mm. like not a grown-ass kid, otherwise I'd have the kid, but like little kids, and when they whack their mum, and then the mum goes, no, don't do that, yes, don't do that. And they, soft turning. Yeah, that, and then it does it again. Mm -hmm. And all of me just wants to go over there. I had you to know. discipline a woman's kid for her. Um, one time I was at university in Nottingham, and this kid was climbing up the wall, very dangerous. The mum's like, get down. Said, fuck off, mum, fuck off. What? I said, what did you say to your mum? So you did get you down there now. Oh, <laughs> Did you? Yeah, 100%. I was so mortified. That I was like, I, it was like an, it was an impulsive reaction. I didn't even mean to do it, but I was like, that is how are you legend. talking to your mum like that? What, was the mother just like? She was like, she just said that. She, thank you. And I was going to say, did she have her clothes off already? Like, hello, <laughs> thank you. Oh, yeah, I'm very nice. Come home with me. This is perfect. This is, I would have been like that. Yeah, perfect situation. No, but they need that. These kids need someone to sort of frighten them into going, what the, f who are you? Yeah, because these kids are raised by social media, so. It's like they're, that's their role models, whereas before it'd be your parents, your brothers, your uncles. Now it's social media, so they emulate what they see online. You can't bring that into this home. One thing my parents always made clear is that outside there is the UK, in this house you're in Nigeria. I, so know yourself. That's so cute. I mean, it, it feels very important. It was very important. And do you have, will you have that in your house where you live? Do we, is it the same or is it, I would is it like watered to, down? I would like to install that same discipline, but I, I am at a conflict between being like traditionally African <sighs> and Westernized. So it's like trying to balance the two. So we'll see how it goes. But like I said, I need to marry a woman that can discipline. You need to marry, but does that mean you need to marry someone who totally gets it, like a yeah. Nigerian way? I think I need someone traditional. Because I think women who were born in a traditional household, like you said with your situation, yeah. um, that was just a norm. It was super norm. Do you know what I mean? It was a norm. Because you, you got beaten by your parents as well, right? Yeah, my father. And, yeah. and I wouldn't say beaten, like, you know. <laughs> you got, okay, like let's small part. You got disciplined. <laughs> proper discipline, yeah. yeah. What's proper discipline? Yeah, given a good thwack yeah. quite often. And and do you regret like, or, no? Because no? it was always a thing, and I, other people speak of this quite often, it was always the stairs, right? Mm -hmm. So the stairs of the house, because dad would launch a backhand, and if you could get above stair five, you then were, you're free, you're you were run. free. <laughs> so you had to really go for it, like people wonder why I run, but like <laughs> if you made stair five, you, you were free, you avoided it. and you just kept going, because that little <laughs> bastard wouldn't follow you up the stairs. So it was, about, it was all about stair five, and even now if I find place with stairs, I will always register where stair five mm -hmm. is. Because I know that, that, that is, that so is that's my home run. Oh, I jump out of there so, I so, so how much do you think your childhood shaped who you are today? I have no idea because, so it seems like normal, 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 normal. And then I go to, and you know, and I, and I don't want to be like, oh, and I was really good at stuff because I'm not that person. But like I could get A's and everything and mm -hmm. did music and was the sports person, whatever. And all I mean is things were easy. Like I could be, get things done quick just by knowing what teachers wanted. I give it to them easily and boom, done. Mm -hmm. So I could do that. And then, and then I thought, um, you know, oh, right, army, that's hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, a mate of my boyfriend of mine tried to get into Sandhurst and he got in. And I was like, well, if he can get in, you know, I can get in. But and before I knew it, 
I was stood on the bloody parade square at Sandhurst because I got in and, and then I was like, shit, I'm in the army. Mm. Like I never really thought that that's, and so you can imagine more discipline, more structure, more, and, and they really do beast you. Um, officer training is hard mm. and it's brutal and, and you know, it, it, it builds you up to a point you'll know you'll never be as tired or cold or pissed off or lonely or whatever. Mm. And so that's what kind of set me out into the world. And then I don't know what happened. Some weird switch. And I just went down a completely different but you, path. You, when you grew up, you said you, you always had like a rebellious nature. Something in me. Yeah. And I guess it was just like lying under the surface, mm -hmm. under this kind of surrounding of rules and discipline and nuns. And you wear that kilt. Now you wear this uniform and those shoes have to be this level of shine. And you had to, at Sandhurst, like iron your uh, pants into two inch squares in the drawer you know so like a level of discipline that's Regimented. like yeah proper which I, I totally admire and i think mm -hmm. everyone should have a go at it because it's great but then um once i got kicked out of the military because i was epileptic mm -hmm. um then i kind of it turned into like a ping pong thing of what do you call those games where you oh they used to exist before your time <laughs> you used to fire a ball up and it would go ta -ding, ta -ding, ta -ding. do you know thank what, god pin, you're pin, here, pinball child. oh good the pinball yeah very good pinball that's so i went from being like straight line woman 35 years in the military is what i signed up for to being like ping ball so, so, so when you say you was rebellious growing up what kind of things was just you everything doing? was easy okay everything was easy it was easy like a teacher would be like rah, 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 rah. your homework's going to be this and i would already be like dig, dig, dig. they just need this this and this hand it in and it was done and I, I would get straight a's and whatever it was everything seemed easy what about rebelling at the home beard gang members been connecting beers since 2019 it's been a while since i've done one of these right? yeah i know you're looking a bit frosty yeah right? me but at the same time my beard's still looking yet me i've grown mine now yeah me yeah, the beard's yeah, looking yeah. good because what do the girls say you come with a bearded personality. That means you come with chess. Yeah? So you want to grow a strong beard, you know where to go. Beard gang members. Did you ever rebel against your dad? Quite only out with boys and stuff. Mm. I know. Did you get any black guys? I did. I went black and I came back. <laughs> I know. They say you don't, but I did. You came back? Why? I Not a good experience? Back. No, it was an excellent experience. Yeah. But, and Dave as he was called, mm. was awesome. Yeah. I had one thing, and this is going to be massively inappropriate. Talk to me. I know. So Dave and I, he, all of his mates came down from London. And so when we went out, somehow he was like off with his mates and not around me. And I was like, that's not so cool now, mm -hmm, is it? Mm -hmm. I mean, I totally get it now. Now I'm older. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, fuck that. But um, Wait, anyway, what did you get? Like, I got... Now I'm older, I see that his, all his mates were down and he probably wanted to be a lot cooler and be with his mates. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we were actually together. Anyway, so he sent flowers to where I was staying to mm. be like, oh, oh sorry, I was a dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he attached his hair and Dave's hair was like real cool little spirals. Yeah. And he attached some of his hair to the flowers. Okay. And so it was really weird because yeah, there was just like this this hair on the flowers that he sent and it didn't look the best if i'm honest when it arrived and people were looking at me odd just a true story so the moral of the story is i went black and i came back but i could revert you could revert yeah <laughs> it's not off the cards you know what i mean <laughs> i didn't come back and say never again yeah i came back and was open to everything oh really yeah yeah always 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 be open to those things yeah yeah interesting <laughs> i never would have expected that <laughs> i use it so funny that is that yeah. isn't it funny but i never ever have told anyone that story either really never so this is an exclusive oh i don't mean it in that way but if i if i can say one of the things i really you know white people piss me off quite a lot <laughs> and i don't want to generalize about a whole you know race mm -hmm. but right, white people can be complete turds and so when someone's accused of being racist, let's say. Mm -hmm. Which you are. Oh, supposedly, supposedly yes. Supposedly, yeah. Uh, and there's no point trying to prove you aren't. Mm -hmm. You will never win in it. But this is my point, is people say, well, they called me a racist. And how can I be when I'm married to a black guy? Or better still, or I have black friends. Mm. Or I went, to I went on holiday to the Caribbean. You're like fucking hell white person just <laughs> shut, shut the up. fuck yeah, up yeah. But like it, that whole i've got a black 
something I just want to go. My friend's cousin's sister's black, so how can I be racist? Yeah, or my wife's black. <laughs> and it's like, no, you, you really... Doesn't mean you can't hold internal prejudice, come on. That, and, and also, what does it mean? Does it mean you have to have that for you to not be one? Mm -hmm. Like, so you've got that card, what you're just going to play it, are you? What do you want me to do? Top Trump you and say, well, I've got a black baby, so fuck you. So why do yeah. people say you're racist? I think it's easy to, because that's what people who were seen as conservative or maybe gobby white women like mm -hmm, me, mm -hmm. or certain things I've said, people say they're racist and then increasingly everybody seems to be racist. Mm. So I guess loads of things I've said or done have made people think that I'm racist. So I have to own all of that. Like I have to own everything I've ever said, everything I've ever done, every impression I've ever given, every media edit that's ever been made. I have to accept all that mm -hmm. because my view is if you put yourself out there, you you'll know this them. shit you have to accept it so yeah. you could be called racist tomorrow i mean who fuck knows i this got the world called is misogynistic fat phobic go. i remember having a there conversation about obesity and this is around covid times and we said that obesity is the real pandemic because that's what's really killing people is like you was on the edge of death and then your your health condition just <laughs> this is a whole this is a pushed whole you over thing. and then yeah i told a little story and then oh, i got ripped to shreds so that that would be an exact example mm -hmm. of how you can say one thing and suddenly you're an ist and mm. it, we're talking about racism but you, so you're now fattest just because every chumba wumba <laughs> my name for fat people <laughs> like all of a sudden there was supposed to be this pandemic also, can I just say, I appreciate you don't represent all black people ever, mm -hmm. but can I just say kudos to every single black person that refused the state injectable mm. because I worship the ground that everybody who knew themselves and wasn't going to fall for that shit, I worship them. Anyway, you only have to say one thing and you be can become fattest or whatever. But for me, Chumbawambas during the pandemic were suddenly like, oh, I really, really, really care about my health. Mm. And you were like, okay 10 ton tessa <laughs> fucking how come you've eaten all of kfc for yeah. the last 10 years well, of your duh, life should care. <laughs> and then they've got these masks on but their face is so fucking fat the mask barely fits and they're like ooh, if i don't keep this mask on ooh, i may die <laughs> yes you'll die because you ate all of kfc you fat fuck <laughs> like and then they say yeah i'm really worried about being hated by fat people you can tell <laughs> and then they say yeah if you think he's fattest fucking check me out <laughs> And then they say things that, oh, I'm, what was the word they were given that made them even more special? Immunocompromised. Yeah. I'm immunocompromised. Oh, you're not fucking, you're salad compromised. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so all of that. Yeah, I, but yeah I So agree. I have to own all the shit I've ever said. And many of the things I've said, either uh, shorthand on Twitter or taken out of context, or maybe I said them wrong, come across as racist. Mm. And if you're a white bird who's conservative, historically, I guess that's a shorthand, they, they you're racist. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I definitely am never going to play a card that says, well, I've got a sister who's black. So check me out. Because that it's, does it's, my tits it's, in. It's, it's a nonsense thing to say. I, I've never got the logic behind saying that. Is that, you know, when you think about certain things before you say them, does, does it make sense in your head? Like, <laughs> just first of all, just think that. Like, look I in the mirror. Does that. it make sense talking I to them? I say that all the time. I'm like, can you hear yourself? Can you and see they, they said, oh, of course I'm not racist. My cousin's sister's boyfriend's oh, black. I hate that. I hate what? that. And with confidence. It makes like, my teeth yeah, there, you, you yeah. man. So that's a massive thing. And so I think that's a lot of what goes on with me. And mm -hmm. then there's probably specific things that people now, like on the, so so I'll say this in, if, if this happens to make it out anywhere, say like you hate what I'm about to say, go mm -hmm. on the comments and say why you hate it. But like one of my things back in the Daily Mail days was when black gangs in London or when kids are stabbing each other, the reason white people don't give a shit is because it's not happening to the white kids. Mm -hmm. Now, of course there's white kids in there. Of course there's white kids who are the troublemakers as well. I'm not saying there aren't white kids who are assholes. I'm saying the reason lots of white posh people in the middle of London don't give a shit is because it's not happening it's to, not them. to them. They're not seeing it. Right. But if you try and say that, and I mean it kindly and honestly, and, and I point my finger at Sadiq Khan because it's not his Muslim voters either mm -hmm. frankly mm -hmm. these are massive generalizations and they can cause you to be labeled racist yeah, yeah, that whereas it. actually when you were sending them you meant them really bluntly yeah, pointing yeah. the finger at that's one white thing people. i learned doing podcasting is that you can't leave anything open to interpretation because anything with any level of ambiguity will be taken out of context and used right. against you but but or maybe you do maybe you leave it to interpretation it's my channel mm. and you and you say so when the whole world hates you 
and you're a monster and 14 million people watch you get given a cunt award, mm. maybe your only thing that you can do is know who you are. Yeah. It's all you have. That's all you have, yeah. And so that's all I have. And that's why it's really fine for me to do any, you know, today could be, if you imagine it, for me, it could have been a stitch up, right? Mm. Uh, it doesn't, and even, even if it was, all you have to do and all I can do is know who I am. Yeah, be true to yourself. Yeah, and know that if you went down to the Thai place where I just got my pad Thai, I tipped the guy and me and the other guy in there who were strangers chitty chatted. Mm. And so that's good for me. Like, I know who I am. That's beautiful. And I think a lot more people need to. And that's another thing I think COVID exposes that a lot of people are, there's a lot of noise in their lives. <clears throat> so when COVID happened and they had no choice but to be alone of themselves, a lot of people start to get depressed because they're like, I never, had to, I never had to be alone with me yeah. for this consistent amount of time. Yeah. And I don't even like being alone with myself because I am a pain in the ass. Like <laughs> I need people to talk to and people to annoy. Like I'm a puppy dog that will like annoy someone just to get them to play with me. Oh, you've got my number now anyway. Yeah, so. it's all good. So I can just <laughs> ring you. But um, <laughs> this has worked out way better than I imagined, honestly. <laughs> but no, I do think that's really been the change for me as well mm -hmm. is the covid bullshit and lockdown bullshit and because i i don't mind uh what someone else believes but i absolutely believe with all my heart it was all a load of shit it was meant to crucify people and it worked mm -hmm. brilliantly and it turned out that that's when it kind of a 180 happened on me which is a, lots and lots of people who hated me with everything they were are t ended up going actually she's all right mm -hmm. Because she's still speaking the same shit that she was always speaking. <laughs> she hasn't changed. She's been consistent she with the hasn't character. really changed. Yeah. And and in a time when the whole world was upside down, there was like a few constant things and it seemed like I was one of yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so then what what kind of because you obviously talked about your childhood being very like regimented, yeah, very strict. Sensible. So then what helped what what yeah. what created Katie Hopkins we'll today? Like, beast. Yeah, like what how did you shape <laughs> how did you come to shape the views that you currently have, like stuff around Islam, immigration, etc.? Yeah, I think I've always, and it would be true now, like, uh, I've always wanted, I do want people to be all right. Mm -hmm. Like, so if anything happens to someone, I'd always be there to, I want everyone to be all right. And mm -hmm. that's really why I locked down and everything was so upsetting because you saw so many people that aren't all right and they're still not all right. Mm -hmm. People that won't leave their houses still. We're missing 25% of kids in school still. Mm. They never came back. Where, they, where the fuck did they go? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have, they never came back. Or maybe, you know, one day in 10 or one, they never came back. No one's asking where they've gone. And teachers knew about a lot of these kids, what was going on with them. So, so anyway, <laughs> maintain the rage. Um, so it's just always knowing that that, that that was there. I think that's the reason I signed up for so long with the military, because in my heart, I believed if you fought for your country, you were going to fight to look after people, mm. all that naive. And then I think having been kind of thrown out of there because of my seizures, um, it just became like, I'm just going to keep pushing for what I think is right. Mm -hmm. Was there anything that you saw that made you think, okay, this is going to be the cause that I'm kind of fighting for? Yeah, just seeing seeing a long time ago what was coming. Mm -hmm. like not in a David Icke, I think the Queen's a lizard way, mm -hmm. but more in a, well, fuck me, this doesn't look too smart that, in just a few years time, anybody who isn't a Muslim, does, their voice won't really matter. Mm -hmm. How becoming a minority in your own country is a weird idea if you don't have anyone to represent you or talk for you. And how there's now so many things where when the truth becomes, you know, hate speech, mm -hmm. then facts become an arrestable offence. And I've been arrested on a number of occasions for spitting facts. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you see that closing in on you, you know it's coming for others. It's coming for you. Mm -hmm. It's coming for it's the same reason stuff can get taken down that yeah. you're saying. I mean, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. crazy. And that was me 10 years ago. Mm. So, so I think there's that. And then I also think that, um, you know, I don't have anything to lose anymore mm -hmm. so i'm not restrained by anything because they have my jobs my house my kids they came for my head whatever and i am free so i can speak out but i see what's coming mm -hmm. we won't have the right to own a car in the next five years you in think? the uk 100 percent. why'd you say that 100 percent. you feel it yeah no you don't, don't feel it no 
Okay, that's what so I've considered, but that's, that's interesting. So 2023, yeah, okay. 2028, yeah. we won't have the right to own a car. Why do you say that? So let's just look at some things. Okay. Let's look at how restrictive and punitive driving is now. Fines, mm -hmm. can't go here, lines oh, here, fines cameras so there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. ULES. Oh, now you can't go here in this bit. Oh, now it's all of this bit. And now you're going to get fined 12.50 if you use your car. And then five, no, 7.50 if you drop at Heathrow. And then 12.50 to come back. Mm -hmm. That is punitive before you pay the taxation on a vehicle. Mm -hmm. This whole kind of culling of old vehicles, they don't want you to have them. Removal of uh, petrol and diesel. Couldn't you me. argue that's just like for a financial gain, though, not necessarily the ab abolition of people owning cars. Do you think kids are learning to drive? Uh, I think so. Do you? Yeah. So my kids, uh, they had to learn, they had to wait to get a test. They had to wait to get lessons. And oh, the tests are fucking long now. Like ah. the, wait, the waiting times are What crazy. do you think that is? Uh, isn't that a back date, a backup from COVID times? <laughs> no? Or is it a deliberate ploy to cull a number of kids who easily get put off because it costs a shit ton? Yeah, yeah, to, yeah, like yeah. to learn to drive now, who can afford that? It's not cheap now. So culling of driving test centres, culling of mm -hmm. teachers, da da da. So they're doing it that end and at the other end, they're trying to persuade people to have shitty electric vehicles. And where do people think electricity comes from? And who controls it? I just, I know I sound like a mad wacko. No, no, no. I'm, I'm all for conspiracies, especially because people label things conspiracies to derail the reality of the situation that you're, that you see. Yes. So I think if you've got credible views as to why you think something's heading in, in, in a direction, I just want to see the logic in it. Yes, I hear you. Know you. I mean? And I, so I'm trying to give you steps at the young end, steps at the old end, this whole coming for the petrol diesel mm -hmm. thing, this push to get people to take EVs. No fucker wants an EV because mm -hmm. they're a nonsense. <clears throat> Don't get an EV next time, please. No, 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 no. Okay, I've good. I've my lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Eight grand on a new engine. That crazy. This is why you need to do more of these so you can raise cash back. Yes, so fucking give us money. <laughs> <laughs> so watch and buy a thing or whatever the thing is. What do you sell? Uh, do you sell? Do you sell anything on the site? Do you have a... No, not yet, but we're <gasps> getting towards it. So you need merch. We need merch. We need everything. Get it's on coming. the merch, babe. It's coming, it's coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop going and doing cage fights and get some merch going, for God's sake. <laughs> Um, so I believe we won't have a car in five years. I believe we won't have the right to own houses within mm. 10 years. You could feel that coming. The house surely. situation definitely because the, I'm trying to buy at the moment while well, saving to buy. And this is like, this doesn't look too good. It does not look too good. Do you still live with your mum? I, yeah, I moved back. You're I was the renting cutest before. thing I've ever I, I, did meet. <laughs> Isn't he the cutest? No, because I, 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 I just thought to myself, what, it doesn't make you. sense to um, be no, giving doesn't. this money to someone else. No, live with your mum. Give it to my parents. And how happy is your mum? Oh, she loves it because now she just asks me for everything. Every time she needs her, ah, so cute. Son, I need this, I need that. I was like, oh, fuck it. She gives you mom, Here you go, mum. You're looking after her. Yeah, you have to, though. Life's a cycle, though, isn't it? You start as a baby, you grow old, and you become like a baby again. So that's what we're here to do. Do you have a? Do you have the old bedroom you used to have when you were little? No, it's a, it's a new house. So we moved to Essex. Oh, I want it to be the same. I want you to be in a single bed. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I'm used to. Is tiny rooms. Or a bunk though. bed. Yeah, where I've always grew up in the states and stuff. I've always yeah. been used to like small Nickel, spaces. tiny spaces. I'm always like I've, one thing about me. I'm very content. Like, I don't care about having the biggest extravagant thing. I've just always been content. I was raised to be content. So that's very good. So I've always had that. Yeah, but living back home is smart. But yes, will they? Will young people ever be able to own a home? And will they allow people who do own a home to keep their home? Mm. I don't. I don't think they will. That's interesting. I think they're going to squeeze us until you're just sucking on the arse of a bug. <laughs> That's it. No meat, no nothing. <laughs> well, you mentioned feeling like a minority in your countries. Is that a view that you still hold today? Yes, yes. Wow. And, and because, um, you know, let's go now. Let's go to Birmingham. Mm -hmm. What am I? I'm a minority. Luton, Bradford, London, I'm already a minority. Mm -hmm. Leicester. And you could say it doesn't matter. And I totally get that. So Mark Collette said he believes in um, peaceful separation. Oh. Of the races. Is that well, that you... sounds like a load of old shite. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like someone just going... Blah, 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 yeah, he said he, he lives in peaceful separation. Yeah, bullshit. That, you know, we yeah. should all go well, back to our that's respective. that's lovely. Yeah. But that sounds like I'm just giving you some lines. Da, 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 da. Mm. I think, like, kind of what we were talking about at the top end of this thing, people like being around people that they're like, similar mm. to. Mm. It doesn't have to be colour or anything, but just like similar to. Mm -hmm. And typically we're quite similar to people that we grew up around or knew mm -hmm. in my, back in the day. And I think that's perfectly normal. 
And I go, if you go around London, they say, oh, London, multicultural, multicultural. It's not what I see. What do you see? I see the Polish quarter and we could go there in a minute. Mm -hmm. We could go to the Lebanese area and there's mm -hmm. a whole bunch of Lebanese people. We could go to the Muslim quarter and we'll find some Muslims. And if I've spent time in refugee camps, same. Like in the jungle, uh, in, the, in the migrant camp there, everybody's still divided. There's the Afghan zone, there's the Sudanese zone. Mm -hmm. That Everyone's still in their bits because people like it that way because they're all similar. And I don't, I don't believe in this whole divided separation mm -hmm. bullshit. I just see that very rapidly I'm becoming a minority. What do you think that's, that's down to? weird. What do you think that's down to? I guess we just aren't very good at having sex a lot. <laughs> no, I guess we just... Um, we just we just kind of ran out of reasons to keep going and building our population and mm. so we are we are rapidly becoming irrelevant in because, the uk because in which is sort of all right no, it, it does is. it matter I, it, that's the question though, yeah, isn't, isn't it? it because um in order to maintain a culture as they say or to to keep a, a demographic of people you need to have what 2.1 babies per family something like that yeah so in the UK, like I think it's just around the two mark, so it's obviously going down and down and Loads down. Loads down. But I think it, I don't see how people can argue about um, this idea that you're becoming a minority when you're just not having enough kids. So then, what, what is supposed yeah, that, yeah. what is supposed to happen? Right. Also, I don't. Yeah, I'm not arguing against that. Mm -hmm. It's just that when you are a minority, you're like shit. Well, where where is my place then? Okay, so you're questioning where you, where you belong to. If, if, where do you belong then? So if you belong nowhere, which seems to be the idea, is that we all belong to this big globe. No one belongs to a country anymore because you're not allowed to fly the St. George's flag because obviously it'd be mm. a, I'd be racist. Uh, you don't really... You're not supposed to believe in the family unit anymore, even though as a Nigerian you do. 100%. Of course, but the idea from government is you don't believe in the family unit. It can be two mums, four dads, half a dad and someone who thinks he's you know a lady today so there's no family unit anymore and then so you're not a christian culture anymore so you don't belong to a church it's like well shit me what do people belong to anymore mm -hmm. and that's i guess i see and that's that what you're questioning there. yeah i'm questioning what would you have children believe in what mm -hmm. do they what do my children belong i mean i know what they belong to but what do you belong to if you if you don't exist anymore so so what how if in your ideal world how do you envision it looking or or things i just happening? like i'd like it to be really honest mm -hmm. i'd like it to be honest about the fact that people do like to hang around with people they are similar to mm -hmm. and, that, and that was always true i like it to be honest that having a massive muslim majority is is going to be concerning for some groups of people mm -hmm. that aren't going to be me first so lgbt <laughs> please <laughs> how do you think this is going to work out in london for you honestly this is the, this is unsayable shit man mm -hmm. this is unsayable how do you think it's going to work for lgbt when london is a muslim majority how do you think it's going to go for jewish people when london is a majority muslim city which i think it is do you think is it we sent what well if you go tower hamlets if you go if you if you take so off the, the, thing, so the one to five, yeah. But but that's that's fine as well. Like, mm -hmm. no dramas. But I know what it's like to be at the front end of things. So be arrested for your views, be interviewed under caution for your views, be threatened with prison for your views, lose your jobs for your views. Right, that's just me as a white bird, mm -hmm. right? Now let's say you're LGBT. How do you think that's going to work out do for you, you? Do you support LGBT? Yeah. Okay. Well, LGB mostly, actually. LGB, LGB Alliance, I, I'm a big believer in. But not the T. Good, sturdy lesbians. I love me a good, sturdy lesbian. Mm. Give me a good, sturdy lesbian. Claire Balding. <laughs> Come on. What is not to love about Claire fucking Bald? If I was going to mug... Oh, I nearly said mug runch. <laughs> if I was going to rug munch, good, sturdy lesbian. Yeah? Yeah. None of this newfangled stuff. None of the beautiful lesbians. Mm. I want a proper... And a lot of my supporters are staunch lesbians. Oh, really? Proper. They come to my shows and try and, you know, yeah. get a nibble. Yeah? Yeah. Mm. And then a lot of gays. Okay. Good, solid gay men. Mm. A lot of my... I had a show at the same time as Eurovision. Gay men came to my show instead of watching Eurovision. <laughs> Fuck me. That is a good solid gay right there, isn't mm. it? Uh, yeah, no, it's interesting. I, okay, you don't, don't, you don't need to agree. I'm saying, interestingly enough, um, is, is, like you said, is there, is there a fear of change? Is it that? So, so what is it? What's the problem 
you know, you're saying, what's the problem if if white people are dying out or mm -hmm. I'm a minority everywhere? What's so what? And I see that, but then it's like, but then where does this where does this go? You know, play out for me. Mm -hmm. Where does this end up if we are a, if we are a Muslim majority country? Mm -hmm. And bear in mind, I get along perfect with those people. But and if Islam is going to be the majority religion, shit me, we aren't going to be able to have a lot of the diversity we currently have because okay. it won't be allowed. We've just seen right. So there's a place called Hamtramck mm -hmm. in Michigan in America. It doesn't matter to anyone. They've just had their first all Muslim council elected and all the good and great white people who were like, you know, the sort of people I saw at Black Lives Matter marches going, I don't understand, but I stand. Apologetic white people pretending to want to fit in. Mm -hmm. Pathetic in Work their anoraks from Shoreditch. <laughs> Fuck off. Um, all of those apologetic whites were like, oh, look, a Muslim majority council. This is so great. We're so diverse. First thing that's happened banned lgbt flags on any building oh, really oh yes now happening right now hamtramck michigan america so so it doesn't really take a lot to see what that might future might look like here in so the your uk thing is not, it's not necessarily the people but it's the it's the it's the ideology it's islam mm -hmm. won't tolerate and islam won't tolerate jewish people islam will not tolerate doesn't matter what what some you know nice guy who's looking great for his pr slot will say they will not tolerate Jewish people and they will not tolerate LGBT people. Mm. Do, couldn't you argue that someone like Sadiq Khan, who's a Muslim, is an example of how how it could look if they do get to power? Because I don't Jesus think... Jesus Christ. He hasn't done anything crazy in terms of like people-wise. Wait a minute. Go on, educate me. What? Were you even there for the New Year's Eve fireworks two years ago? I wasn't, I wasn't. Not a single fucking firework in the sky and a guy reading a shit poem. <laughs> do not tell me that's the London you want to see. I understand. You, Les, do yeah. you like driving your big fat but, car until it breaks down? That's political stuff. What, I'm talking, what I'm are talking. you even political? What is political about stopping ordinary people's right to drive a car? No. Twelve pound fifty a day. You want to pay that? Nope. Let's go not. in at once. But my car's new enough. So. Do you want to pay? So you smug ass <laughs> me. Your car's broken down. You don't even have a car right now, son. I will take like your mother, no, I, and I will batter you. Go and choose something in the corridor, and I will beat you with it. Oh, that's sexy. I know. <laughs> Believe me, I know my powers. <laughs> what about the fact that they could only ever have a Muslim mayor of London now because the voting majority is Muslim in London? Okay. Is that okay? It's not It's not representative. Is it okay, though, that there'll only ever be a Muslim mayor of London from now on? Is it okay? I don't think that'll be the case, though. What? You're just saying that. You, you just know what? that no, out your ass. No, I think, honestly, like this is the first time so we need to see how it plays out so i'm not okay. I, i'm not ready to commit to this being the fair, situation fair. until i see it play out maybe it's also age right mm. i haven't got as long <laughs> i haven't <laughs> so got long to see, see this play out now. like i need to see what happens now. yeah no no i need to get the i need to get the fast one i need to go on netflix and get the whole fucking series <laughs> done get, so that i can go see i fucking told yeah. you well when black mirror makes the episode maybe we'll, <laughs> we'll know it's real but, but like you said if you use an example of the, the michigan that you just said um and they yeah, ham tramick ham yeah, tramick yeah, who, yeah. Who, who have Got instilled their religious ideology exactly. within the political realm. I don't think Sadiq Khan has done that as such. So I, I couldn't no. I couldn't comfortably argue that if we did have more Muslim representation, that would be the case. But I see the potential of what you're saying because like with what Tommy said, Islam doesn't bend. And as you were saying bend. off camera, the reason, the reason why Christianity isn't as big as what it is now is because people have they've changed it to suit their totally. lifestyle. So they've taken the things that they like, removed the things that they don't like. Totally. And that's okay. Totally. But I guess what they'd argue that that's not truly Christian. The same with, with Islam. Islam's like, no, we will stand by what we say because we believe what we're saying is the truth. Yes. Now I can see why if, if that was the majority uh, thing and, and they weren't willing to change or adapt to the society yes. they live in, I can see how that might be problematic. Yeah, exactly. Because not everybody has to live by your, it's, it's yes. a doctrine. And yes. we're, not, we're not here to live under that doctrine. Yes, you know and if I mean? you try walking through areas, you know, like just outside Paris, the Garden Noir, if you try walk that as a white woman with like shorts and t-shirt on, you know, you aren't going to get many blocks before someone's going to either spit at you or tell you to put clothes on. Where's this? In, just in Paris. So okay. what you've just seen happen in Paris, all the riots and yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. that is coming out the suburbs, which are majority Muslim suburbs. Mm -hmm. And the riots we've just seen, majority Muslim suburbs. You know, there is a reason Notre Dame 
burnt down. Mm -hmm. There is a reason Jewish people are fleeing Paris. You know, and and, and so I'm trying to pick specific examples that I've seen firsthand Mm -hmm. to give um, some background as to why I'm not just sort of trying to sit here like some rabid anti-Muslim person. I'm trying to give specific examples of countries and places that have got a majority and what happens to certain people when that happens. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say, it's interesting that I had a friend whose mum worked for Haringey Council and there, the Jewish population there put in, they wanted to shut the roads on Saturday because it's it's their day. Yeah. Uh, it got obviously shut down, but I was just going to say that religion in itself, I don't think it's, I know what you're saying about Islam, like they, yeah, not bending, but religion, any sort of religion, yeah. just like to truth, force, truth, truth. force your views on anyone. Truth, to, uh, truth. yeah, and I, that's so why I, I don't, don't think it's so much. And like, like I say, I'm in, I'm in Tower Hamlets, I do get that sometimes, like, I can walk down the street, the weather's been nice, if I'm in a play suit, sometimes, yeah, people do look at me like I'm a bit piece of shit, and it isn't that nice, but at the same time, the majority are fine, do you see what I mean? Like, I think, I personally, like, I've, I've always gone better with Muslim ladies than Christian ladies. Yeah, me too. Oh, 100%. Than, than Christian ladies are a right pain in the ass. Not your mum, obviously. <laughs> no, your yeah. mum's lovely. My mum's cool. Yeah, You're like my mum. I, I, I love her already. I've already moved in. That's <laughs> why so I was asking about the bunk bed situation. I'm already in yeah. there. No, nah, you can share a bed with me. You're not forcing any, your views down anyone and it's fine, isn't it? Exactly. Like, and I, so I s- s- think that will be the balance. Yeah. But I do think LGB lot that are like, do, 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 yay, diversity. Yeah, I, see what you're saying. So I honestly look at them and go is this gonna i don't want to say bite you in the ass because obviously that's unfortunate but you know um this is gonna bite you babes and i don't look forward to that you know there's no joy in it so so there's slightly that and then i guess there's slightly as well a sense for me that i do want to stick up for i really would like it if if um you know if positions were open to everybody mm-hmm. like the idea that if you're a white guy now you you're, you can't apply to be in the police or you don't get to go to the training day that tells you how to get into the interview i yeah, think the, everybody the, should have the same people yeah it should be the same opportunities for everyone and i mean that literally everybody mm. yeah yeah no no i, I agree with that because again it needs to be fair representation if we are going to be a multicultural society then that needs to be reflected in in the high positions of power as well i think so i also think it's a bit shit sometimes so like you get these white advertising execs right mm-hmm. and they want to show diversity mm-hmm. and there's something so inauthentic about so much yeah of it's it. not you real just, you can see through it right you can see through right, it and i can and you can yeah, what yeah, i'm trying yeah. to say is we're both seeing the same thing yeah, aren't yeah, we? Which is like, i'm like you're forcing it yeah um, like, i'll buy your stuff anyway like yeah <laughs> and like he would never be with her she I mean? would never be with him this like if that's the odd. advert yeah. i just feel like i feel like that's insulting to nearly everybody mm. that's, yeah, I, I also see that what was your what was your um, beef with philip schofield I was just saying four minutes. Oh, we were like, wait, he's got a problem. He's calling out. We told him to call out. He's doing it. Don't worry. Everything's fine. Oh my God. Phil Schofield. Yeah. As in what was what's what? what? Uh, I think you two had a bit of a pass up back in the day, didn't you? <laughs> so, I mean, so first of all, you have to say, if you, if you remember the moment, you have to give Phil Schofield points, right? Mm-hmm. And as much as he was well prepared for it, I was on saying that I didn't like certain kids' names. Oh, this is the, the country. Oh, my like, shitting yeah. God. Yeah, yeah, so it was good morning. And it was, it was this really dull thing. They said, look, Katie, come on and talk about how people choose their children's names and it really matters to them. Right? That was the brief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At which point I'm like, mm, like <laughs> that sounds really interesting. Like, oh, people care what they call their kids. So I have to come up with something that brings it home, mm. gives it a little cha-cha-cha. A bit of spice. A little bit of spice. Thank you. And so I like, use my, because I had two little girls at school, and I thought like, I use my mum thing. Well, look, we all know that there's always one shit in the playground. Like, mm. there's always one kid everyone hates. And we all knew it was true. And I was like, in my school, with my little girls, I made them out to be perfect. They weren't. <laughs> I was like, it's a kid called Tyler. I was like, and as soon as I see that mother get out of her Renault Espace, <laughs> with a football shirt on. She screams, I'm sorry for the audio. Tyler! <laughs> <laughs> you can even visualise yeah, what you're right. talking this about. This is literally my day. <laughs> Stop biting destiny! <laughs> I did that. Oh, I just had a bit of a hot flush. <laughs> and the other one was Belle. 
And I was like, why do people call their daughter Belle? Like mm-hmm. before they've even seen it, like before it's even come out their vagina, they've go, I'm going to call it Belle. And this thing is the fucking ugliest thing you've ever <laughs> seen in your life. And they've called it beautiful. Like, fuck it. So anyway, the Tyler thing, and it went massive. Mm. But I was just like, yeah. And I don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> Blue eyeshadow, yeah. white suit, wasn't it? With some out- the outfit from hell, yeah. from hell. And I was like, yeah. I don't even like it when they call kids names. And I'm like, Brooklyn. Puh. And then it was, um, there was another one yes, I had. Flowers, right, flowers. flowers. I was going, I, w- I went for it because look, it's dumb ass mm, bloody thing. Mm, mm, mm. And then Phil Schofield, because he's got his earpiece and someone's told him, said, Speed him information. but what's your daughter called? And my daughter's called India, mm-hmm. <laughs> which happens to be a country. <laughs> But to me, it was always in demand button. It was like a name. Yeah. So like, I was like, no, no, no. Well, to me, <laughs> to me. That's not her name. That's not her name because <laughs> India means India. It doesn't mean India. I mean, like 13,000 or 13 million, it turns out. So the most viewed clip of all time on Good Morning Britain in history. And so everybody at home who had like a Tyler or a Bell or a Destiny, who I just was really offended. fucked off, were like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> And that was basically that. But the, but the story that never got told was that mm-hmm. the next day I had to go and do the school run at my kid's school with Tyler. I had to face the school gates where there was an act that Tyler existed. <laughs> I had to show up at school that day and do the school run. Oh, gosh. But me. So that was the Phil Schofield and me thing. Also, for a very long time, I worked at Good Morning Britain, probably mm-hmm. twice a week I was mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. And I knew about Phil. We all knew about Phil the senior level execs say nothing knew about phil uh really? all of the senior people yeah you know nothing of this and this is all sits with me everybody knew everybody knew did, wow so you, any of the bullshit he was gay or did you know did they know about the young boys? they knew about the runner because oh, there's footage okay. of him in the restaurant they all use opposite yeah. when the boy was tiny that, that came out when he first came out it was it was kind of like on the, everyone kind of knew he had been pushed out yeah a, the mm. son had the boy's yeah, story yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. So blah blah blah. So that's what that the background though is that I look like a massive, massive asshole. Mm-mm-mm. But you're not, you're cool. Oh, but also it was kind of like it's now funny. In hindsight, it's kind of it's, fucking it's funny. funny. It's funny. And the story of the Tyler thing was real and funny. I just want to quickly touch on so the the matrix yes. situation. <laughs> it's okay. Is it yeah? Is okay, it okay? I'll, yeah, you carry on and then so we'll stop. But the, thank you very much. Appreciate thank that. you. The, the Matrix situation, like, obviously there was a time when you was working for LBC, um, Mail Online, Mail Online. You're doing better than um, Piers Morgan, which yeah, you loads. loved. I love that. But you said that when you get to certain positions of power, yeah. it doesn't matter whether you're left, right, Muslim, Jew. Doesn't matter. They all work together to kind of oust get you out. Get rid of you, yeah. What, what happened with if that? If you come out of your lane, so Piers Morgan has been very good, despite the things he's actually done, mm-hmm. like spying on a kid that was dead, like yeah. putting false pictures of our military, like a hundred other things Piers Morgan has done. He has stayed in his lane in the news cycle. He never he goes has, against that. He has never, and you'll see him swing. So when Trump was doing well, pro-Trump, Trump's doing badly, anti-Trump. Well, uh, lockdowns and jabbing everybody, just stick it in them, jab them, jab them. Mm. Comes Now it's the other way. Oh, maybe I was a bit wrong about that. He's like he's like seaweed in the sea. Mm. right? And it's, that isn't my lane at all. Mine mm. is see it, say it as I see it, accept the consequences and they can be brutal. And there was a particular time when I was... Um, in southern Italy watching the migrant boats come across from Africa, from Libya, and that friggin' matrix absolutely descended. Mm. And I and I watched it in slow time, in real time. It was from uh, the chief rabbi, Brandon Cox, that guy, something about him, Save the Children, uh, Board of Deputies, that's the Jewish organisation, Labour, the Conservative. It descends in a... It, like it, it's like you're inside some sort of jellyfish and you cannot get out and really? it just <laughs> your whole life goes all of it everything i owned banks uh home um none of my children have my name anymore cuz people would report my children to social services and they would come to interview my children about being abused. And it was these people in these positions this, uh, that- after this after i was on the southern italy shoreline plotting the migrant boats, bringing the migrants over, this thing descended and removed me from the face of the planet. 100%. I've never been one day 
near any of my children's school since that happened. Really? Not one day. I have a different name when I write to the school about something. Um, I, I don't exist in that sense. That's crazy. Because I, when, when I used to watch your stuff, I'd think that your views would kind of work with what they wanted. When, nah. I, when I was listening and, and researching and seeing that that happened, I was like, whoa. Yeah, no, I got oh, taken crazy. out pretty fast. LBC, gone. Daily Mail, gone. Um, then legit law, lawfare against me. So my house, gone. Uh, for a while, the kids, uh, you know, were under, we were under watch mm -hmm. to see if I could have them. And uh, yeah, all gone. That's scary. That's good because that's for, for that to happen to someone like you. I was just like, mm -hmm, this is actually crazy. Yeah, and so it, sometimes when people say controversialist, yeah. you know, I I want to go. You think you think you do this just because, you know, mm. you, th you think you do this for fun. If you didn't truly believe in your heart, you felt you should call out things mm. that you saw coming that you knew were not going to be good. You think you would endure all this, uh, and be hated universally if you weren't true to yourself yeah, yeah. i don't believe you would do it it'd be difficult or you, mentally you'd be messed up yeah if you couldn't stay consistent with it Cause, unless you know yourself because it's interesting because obviously what's happening with andrew tate and whatnot when you mentioned the matrix oh, and he true. keeps talking about the matrix you saw like, it he one tweet bragged about his cars and and tried to scold everything. uh what's her face greta yeah go, yeah that was it you saw them Fump. gone mm. No, it's Same scary. Thing. It is scary. Yeah, it's there. And lastly, before you go, I want yeah. to touch on the CUNT situation. The Cunt Award. Yes. You can say it. Yeah. I felt quite bad when, like at first, do you know what? I'll be Are we real. talking about the Cunt Award? Yes, yes, yes. So at first I was like, yeah, they got her. Like, because the the, the idea I had of yes. you was what the media yes. was painting to me. Yes, and it so seems really fun. Be more conscious and, and trying to understand people who they are. You're not what they paint you out to be. That's what, that's what I'd say. But... When I was doing the research, when I felt quite bad because I remember um, I was watching one of your interviews and you said that what really affected you is not necessarily that, that they did that, is the fact that you had empathy for someone who they'd said was in trouble. So you bought them a bottle of alcohol, you wanted to go see the person, and they just kind of manipulated you. And it it's was like, I wanted, to, I wanted to be a good person, but then. It's hor you know. It was horrid. It was horrid. So I spent three months in South Africa mm -hmm. because white farmers are being brutalized out there. And mm -hmm. I did a documentary on it. That doesn't matter necessarily, it really matters to me. Mm -hmm. And this was supposed to be a, an award from, um, but mostly an opportunity to give a little speech to a group of South African farmers. And I was, they were going to fly me to Cape Town. And I couldn't, I told them, well, thanks very much. I don't really like awards anyway, mm -hmm, not that I've been mm -hmm, given mm -hmm. any. And, um, and I was like, I really appreciate you, but I can't come because I'm banned from South Africa because of my documentary, I'm banned, mm -hmm. right? So then they changed, and I didn't know it wasn't them. And then they changed it to Prague. And it was just a bunch of boys in a hotel room, but they paid the actors. Mm. And so I did a speech, which I have always asked them, just release my speech because the speech is true me. Mm. Is, I just want everyone to be all right. I, I spent time on the farms. I've seen it firsthand. It was dangerous and violent and women have been raped. And, uh, and, and then they just made it into this cunt award and a big joke on my expense. Oh, no, it's right, been yeah. like, I think when you're one of the most seen things. And so it was a weekend where I did not do very well mm. after that. I... I, there are times where you literally dark places dark places and i brought it on myself because i've put myself out there mm -hmm. but i did honestly think that's just i don't know that i can go on when i really felt so hurt and then i've got a daughter who's massively autistic and she said to me and she was only little still and she said um well, did you do what you said you would do um did you get paid they paid my travel expenses mm -hmm. and she said were you nice to everybody and i was like yes and yes and yes and she said so it's all right then Aww. that's beautiful i know Aww. my god and so my daughter saved me mm. because her autism allowed her to cut through her because she doesn't do emotion mm -hmm. and she just took me back to was i nice to everybody and i know later it came out that many of the waiters and team in the room felt ashamed because they'd been part of that mm. and they saw who i was as in a, a nice relatively nice person mm. yeah so so there was that story but it doesn't matter you still have to accept it as you put yourself out there you've got to suck it up really. but it doesn't mean that you don't sometimes feel like just jumping into a river and yeah. not coming back up the only part i thought was controversial about that was the the situation with the farmers 
So he was out there helping white farmers. Just in, white farmers. In, in South Africa. Who's, who's the, but the families that work on those farms are generations of black and white people together. Okay. So they're white farms. They were historically, that's, I mean, can't, we can't all apologize for sins of the past and whites arriving in South Africa. But for generations, decades and decades, grandparents down to the little children all work on these farms together. Mm-hmm. Most of them are still majority white owned, but not always now. And what's happened is these whites are being removed. So, so their land is, they call it expropriation without compensation. They just mm-hmm. take it and give it to people who then don't farm I thought, it. The, the only way I could say, don't you think it's potentially controversial that, again, the, the indigenous people there, the black Africans. There's a lot, there's a, the white farm, black farm situation mm-hmm. or black people, white people mm-hmm. in South Africa is a, is a nightmare. Okay. And whites are down to 3%. Mm. And it's brutal. And okay. there's a, a whole world of apartheid stuff that no one can ever make right. But now there's a kind of vengeance thing going on. Mm. Two wrongs don't make a right. Right. And because I was there, the ANC banned me. So, um, you know, it's not like white people are super popular. Then. Yeah, no, yeah. So, but anyway, it was a thing that was close to my heart and I got given and a cunt award. And then I didn't even know mm. until I got the note. Well, it was rough, man. It was rough. I, it was a dark place, yeah. and uh, and yeah. So, but no, no sympathy. You know, the life of uh, big knocks. Yeah. Right. But thanks for coming ah, today. Thank thanks you. for coming today. I said you survived. You survived. It's like this hard card camera, fucking iPhone, recording with his foot. <laughs> fucking nightmare for you. Do you, have you got any projects or anything you want to promote? Tell people where they can yeah, find you. Fine. Yeah. They want to find me. They'll find well, they already know who you are somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I mean. But no, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's so fun. Yeah. It's so fun. It's like and people, you know what to do? Like, share, subscribe. You know.